Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix Online Meeting 288, October 15th. Getting towards the holidays, getting towards the uh, wrapping everything up and making it the end of the year. I'm Rob Menching. I'm here with Bob Arntzen, and this meeting is recorded for those of you that aren't uh, with us right here right now. What are we doing today? We're keeping it simple like we've been keeping it simple for the last few weeks because, well, we've been really busy doing a whole lot of other things, uh, not just stuff here. We'll do triage and then we'll take questions and comments. Uh, Zach got here early and already got his question kind of a uh, freebie answered and all that kind of stuff. The advantages of appearing live and hanging out regularly and being a member of a uh, chat. So, uh, what I used to call a peanut gallery apparently is now called chat. That's what my, br my son tells me. They're just chat bad. All right, uh, let's go do triage. Bob, you ready? Yes. Delayed, yes. All right, cool. And I had to think about it. My stream is like, I can see everything like paging in right now. Uh, all right, uh, I guess we start at the top and we work our way down. Uh, 8769, exception while parsing overall case in variables case insensitive. Uh, case is sensitive, and then bad things happen. Cool. Yep. Go ahead and give this to me. I know he opened a PR. It's not completed, but I will take a look at that because crashes aren't good. And yeah. So anyway, we'll take it. Wow. That that that's that's a really that's that's an amazing position to take. Yeah. I know. <laughs> um. Okay. Eight seven seven five. Reinstall mode is overridden by bundle. I have a question. This has never happened. They didn't check the box. Do we just punt it? They did check the box. Oh, they did? And then they unchecked the box in an edit. Oh. Which I found amusing. I've done that before um, in a whip, actually. Um, but clearly someone trying to, you know, skirt around the rules. All right, cool. Let's close it. Um, 8780, make a better API for Wix output. This comes from customer, um, or no, sorry. We had a customer hit problems where Wix uh, outputs, uh, binary Wix lips, which are Wix outputs, is the structure underneath. Uh, when it got really big, crashed because zip archive from .NET framework, .NET core, I don't know, whoever, .NET. Um, .NET, yeah. .NET uh, loads the entire zip file in memory when you're doing an update, which is just bonkers like that's not at all correct we really should open a bug against them too maybe there's uh, we should open a bug against them just be like uh this doesn't oh, seem like a good idea um anyway um in which we didn't realize i don't know if it's documented and just missed it or if it's not documented and you're supposed to anyway if you get a really big uh binary whistle you can hit problems because it tries to load the whole thing in memory which does not work out in the end um so anyway this is a uh as we did that the API around all this is kind of goofy. I wasn't thrilled when I was doing this in Wix 4, and we haven't fixed it. So Bob was like, it's really bad. And I'm like, yeah, open an issue. So go ahead and give this to me, and I will poke at this for a while for a better API around Wix outputs. Because it's just, it's funky. We did try to do minimal damage um, in the 502, uh, is it 502 release? And 506 yeah. releases to fix it. So, but... It's not thrilled with it, so I will take another swing at it in six to see if I could come up with something that I don't wince at every time I see it. Um, 8782, add support for MS OLEDB SQL. Yeah, that would be great. That can go up for grabs. That would be fantastic if someone wanted to do all that work. These, these SQL providers are bonkers confusing, and I don't understand them. And someone... Well, but it's, it's time, it. you know... Every every five years or so, there needs to be a new. Yeah, they got to break it, right? Get a whole new yeah. one, another way of doing things, change everything, and we'll have another set of if defs and da da da. da. Yeah. Anyway. Yep. Um. We. So yeah, someone could work on that. Someone that wants to work on SQL stuff. That'd be cool. Not fun. Fun. Fun for somebody, not me. Um. Eight seven eight four. Page not found. So this is our. Uh. Yeah, okay, yeah so. we get we get these regularly. The the people expect that the schema namespace URIs are URLs. They're not. Um, but this one I kept open because we are the ones creating the link. If you go yeah. to that uh, MSI package uh, yeah. doc link, yeah. you'll see that the 
uh, namespace URI is is a hyperlink. Uh, dumb. And that's DocuSource doing that to us, isn't it? All yeah. Right. Well, it it's me. usually convenient, but yeah, yeah, you, yeah. All right, give it to me. I am. We're gonna switch documentation up quite a bit here, so this is. We'll solve that problem as part of that update. Eight seven eight five update how to block OS versions to Wix four five compatibility. Right, so this person did the right thing and opened an issue talking about um, things and wants to add and has opened a PR that we can go do it. So yeah, I think we can give this to them. Um, how to block, oh, it seems outdated. Yep. Yeah, well, it's not outdated. It's just for Wix 3. So we need a Wix 4 version. Sure, we can go talk about the PR. Oh, they pulled an example for power toys. That's an interesting choice of places to pick your set. They do lots of well, strange things in power toys. They, for reasons well, I don't understand. But it's from Microsoft. Yeah. It's, so it's, right. it, that's a very strategic example to use. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've, yeah. I've, yeah. I like the Just power toys people. Just because you can write software doesn't mean you can write yeah. good uh, look, installers. Power toys people are really good people. Um, uh, they, they were, they were really good. They, they did a lot of work with us on the ARM64 being helpful and all that kind of space. So, but they have oh, yeah. some, they make some choices that are like, I wouldn't make that choice. And I'm like, but we want to work that way. And I'm like, that's a really strange kind of way of working. But yeah, um, Wix is flexible. You can use it that way. Um, but yeah, anyway, should go through. I've thought before of doing like a, an online stream of walking through the power toys setup and kind of like taking it apart as like a free code review, like what we do for fire giant, but we do those privately with companies and just go through the open source project. Be like, Hey, here. Yep. I would just have right, to go right. in with the, the right tone of these are they're They're doing some really one there. It's a kind of a neat system. Uh, it's a fairly low level system and they're, you know, integrating with deeply into the operating system, which is cool, but they're doing some kind of strange things and we'd have to get the, it's fine if you want to do it this way. I wouldn't do it that way and then just go from there. Anyway, um, so yeah. And then document have fail installation and missing old V3 is the same sort of thing um, and has opened a PR for this too. So that's great. We can go ahead, give that to him and go then review PRs about the right way to get the doc working and doing all that kind of stuff. So it doesn't scroll, but cool. Yay. This is the first doc contributions in four years, five years, that aren't like formatting fixes and stuff like that? No, we've had others, but I have high standards, unfortunately. Mm. All right. Um, that's trash. That was pretty easy. This will be a short meeting. I didn't say it at the beginning because I didn't want to jinx it, but uh, there we go. All right. Onward and upward. Other things people want to talk about. Uh, goings ons and such like that. So I've looked into the future oh, ha, 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 uh, and figured out that November 19th would be the next meeting. And then I was like, oh, I wonder what that means for December. And it turns out that'll be then December 17th. And this whole picking the third Thursday, sorry, third Tuesday, Thursday, third Tuesday of the month works out pretty well of generally avoiding the majority of um, holiday type things. Not that a lot of people will be around December 17th if they're off, you know, taking early holidays and going out visiting family and all those kinds of good things. But at least it won't be on the 24th, which it would be if it was one week later. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people would not be showing up on Christmas Eve. Yeah. yeah me included. Yeah. And then the week after that is still December and that would be New Year's Eve, which we might get some people showing up on that. But, you know, they're all prepping for their party that night. Woohoo. I don't know what you people do. I just... Watch the New York ball drop at nine o'clock our time, <laughs> and then go to bed. So <laughs> a little anticlimactic, isn't it? Uh, uh, you know, married with kids, kids that don't care. <laughs> they definitely aren't going out and partying. Um, so yeah, that's the things going on. Pretty straightforward and simple stuff all the way around. Um. Still busy doing customer stuff, so not a lot of other things to talk about in Wix, but there we are. I think by the next meeting, November 19th, uh, we should have 
should be in a better place. Hopefully, we'll see. Um, if not, we'll be just about in a better place <laughs> a couple weeks after. Um, and then we'll go from there. So that's the world. We already answered Zach's question. Bert and Ron, thank you for joining us. Chilling out, hanging out, doing the things. Um, that's where we're at. Um, if anybody wants to pick up that MS Ole DB sequel issue, uh, you'll want to do so quickly. Um, pick it up and say, yeah, I want to fix this in Wix 6. Get on it quick. Um, otherwise, we'll save it for the next one. All right, that's all I got. Pretty simple week this week, which makes sense given the way things are kind of just rolling out right now. No big deal. Um, and Bob, you have anything else? Not a thing. All right, cool. Then we're going to call it good here, and we will pick it all up in four weeks in November. Until then, you guys. Oh, wait. I can't remember if I asked this before. Have you given any thought to divorcing MS Build SDK from the actual Wix version? That's Don't know what that a mean. question, but I'm not sure. I could parse that like three different ways. So is that something like target framework for the actual Wix version? Target framework the actual Wix version. No, so target framework would be analogous to the Windows installer version, which we have divorced Wix from for a long time. The SDK version specifies the set of the, the version of the tools that you're using to build. More the only way to do that would be to ship multiple versions of Wix inside one X SDK. But then you'd think... have to be updating the SDK every time. I, uh, yeah, that's, that's I, true. I, I, no, the but SDK I... is the version that you're using. So the reason the .NET team gets away without putting a version on up there is that they ship inside Visual Studio and they ship inside .NET. So when you install .NET, they install their latest SDK um, and they replace the previous SDK. Because we don't ship inside Visual Studio, we are bound by the limitation of SDK uh, um, SDKs that you must specify a version of the thing you want to download. That's that's why Wix is different from what you're used to in .NET. We cannot create a static version. Um, you have to specify the version to tell MS Build which one to download. That's just the way it works. Um, and amusingly, the, the way they get around, they, they get away with that is that they are installed traditionally installed correct yes whereas wix the installer toolkit can't hmm. yeah. that's interesting yeah so well i mean i guess we could go back to a world where you install wix and then it overwrites that I, we could go that route but that's not what anybody wanted so yeah we got a lot of feedback that's not what people wanted so yeah it doesn't work like that um, Although it is interesting, we we could. I mean, we have the CLI MSI, right? We could install an MS, an MS Build SDK there. Um, in yeah, but that would just in, create conflicts. Then, with you have the SDK, uh, if you use the SDK, it just gets really uh, complicated. Yeah. I had a half-brained attempt at some point where the SDK would dynamically pull the correct toolset version via some creative package reference manipulation. Yeah, but the SDK gets resolved before package references get resolved. Yeah, is that, I mean, you can try, I think you need to go dig into how SDK style, uh, SDKs work and then SDK style projects. I don't think what you're looking for is possible um, using the MS build mechanisms. That isn't like, hey, let's go install the Wix SDK on the machine and then you can use it. That is possible. Although I'm not even, I'm not sure where you put it. I, I, they probably tell you where to put it. I mean, we, yeah, we there, there are things. options for, for yeah. where yeah. you search. But again, that that turns into NuGet resolution. So well, that, that see, that's the thing. There's two NuGet resolutions in there. There's one for the SDK, and then there's another right. one later for the package references. So there there's separate resolutions that happen in that space. Anyway, it's it's complicated. It's tricky, and it's not something that SDKs can use. Um, unless you go back to the old style, I will install my SDK on the machine, which is what .NET does, and then they go do that. And then they also have all their, they, they do a lot more backwards compatibility across all that that we would also have to be doing as well. So anyway, 
Uh, it's not really the way it works. Yeah. Got to pay for the, the ease of the MS build SDKs. Yeah, well, and I, I mean, what's the goal to not have to specify a version? I mean, well, right now it is kind of awkward because you have, you know, you have versions hard coded typically in multiple locations, the SDK, the, the project at the top and all the package references. Now you can fix that with, you know, global.version and directory global packages, JSON. but global.json. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not global.version, global.json. Yep. Um, if you're searching the internet, global.json is the thing that can centralize that. Yes. Yeah. Um, um, so. But it's still kind of a pain. It would be nice if, if SDK style, maybe this is another thing to open a .NET team, uh, open a request to allow central package management, central package version management. I, I forget if it's- CPM. Which, so it's central package management to specify SDK versions in a single file. Then you'd be able to put the SDK version in there and they should be able to read that file at the same time, I think. During the MS yeah, build that, that's the split because CPM you can you can put package reference versions in the in directory that packages. The goal is having a single Wix source that easily compiles against multiple Wix versions and going to a new get multiple, which isn't an option right now. Why? Are right, because of Wix libs? I don't know why you'd want to do. That it'd have to be Wix libs, a single Wix source that easily compiles against multiple Wix versions and can go into a NuGet package. But why do you need multiple? Yeah, so I mean, that, that, that sounds just like the, I, the only thing I can make sense. Oh, okay. I, I, don't, I don't understand this. The scenario doesn't make sense yet, Zach. Um, like, if it's Wix libs, then we're better off getting to a place where we trust the Wix lib format and not have it change. And those kinds of things, and then getting the uh, code to be more resilient about not understanding symbols that it doesn't have. But it's just there's a lot that gets tied into here, and it, it's just it's not really worth it most of the ways around um, in it to to deal with those things. So, but we'll see. Um, we'll see. I thought before that we need something that is somewhere between a merge module and a Wix lib. Something that's lowered enough without all the baggage of merge modules. Because right now Wixlids are very tied to the version of the tool set. Yeah, yeah. That's that's a yeah, that's something we could work towards is making Wixlibs, you know, more stable. And and I we certainly could get in that direction. Um it was hard to see that at Wix four. Um, but now with Wix 5 and Wix 6, certainly could see us getting to a place where that works. But like this change to Wix out makes that tricky too. Yeah, right. I mean, that... The file format is probably going to be the same, but the API around it. So it's like we're getting closer and closer to being able to get to a place where, yeah, there's this, this file format. And we've done enough now that we understand enough that we could finally get this to be compatible. It just it hasn't been a primary goal. Uh, no. yet and so I do expect though probably one day we'll get to a place where yeah it'd be really nice if this was just stable across versions and be like yeah so let's make that happen kind of thing um, so anyway I did source code easy to pause against multiple Wix versions go into a NuGet package I just don't understand this scenario to pause against multiple Wix versions goes to single I don't know why you'd want that you're delivering well, five Wix zero, slip. five zero one, five zero two. But why? Well, those are all compatible within themselves. Like, so you don't have to do anything there. Well, except maybe update the version. That I, that was my that was my take. The and it, it's annoying. Again, you have multiple places where you have to update the version. But in a nuget, but you don't put that in a nuget package. So that's the part I don't get. So good that version there's no reason you can't if you use it again you remember, have to put no no you have to put the project inside a nuget package that doesn't like why would you put a project inside a nuget package because you use nuget as your way of sharing code yeah but the project doesn't 
the project's outside of the NuGet package. Like that's the thing that specifies which pro- NuGet project to bring down. You it doesn't have to. Doesn't have to. I don't know. But what is that then? It's using NuGet as a file share. <laughs> yeah, but how do you reference? Like, then what are you? You're going to do a project reference into the NuGet source code? Like that's just beyond crazy. <laughs> this is like just uh, reference. The yeah. Source code. What's your point? I don't. Yeah. Like I said, I don't you, understand the scenario. From I, I, I have seen several customers use and abuse NuGet because it is the guaranteed mechanism to be able to get assets of whatever form you want um, across, you know, regardless of your network environment. Yeah, I, I get you know, that. You can't I just rely don't... on a file share being right, but... accessible outside the corporate network. That I understand. Moving assets and content through the system makes sense to me. Moving projects through the system, I've never seen anybody do that. That's the part that's kind of weird to me. I've certainly seen NuGets that have just source code in them. That totally makes sense. I've, that I understand. And then oh, you're just asking at the Sorry, so what's the difference then? A source only NuGet includes a project to build it. No, it doesn't. No, it only contains source code. It contains just CS files or just right. contains. Sorry, I, there's nothing preventing it. Is yeah, but, but there's nothing that would, if you did that, there'd be nothing to use it. A source only no. NuGet package, you just say here, and then it pulls all those source files into your projects compile. Not go run another project to do something of that NuGet and then pull it down. Yeah, so putting new Wix libs in NuGet packages, right, that, that makes sense to me. Wix libs in NuGet packages, and then you don't care. That, see, the solution to that is getting Wix libs to be compatible across versions of Wix. That's well, I think that's thing. nearly impossible. So Wix libs across Wix versions? Yeah. Um, unless you're, you're ready to declare that, you know, the entire ecosystem no. of, of yeah. symbols and file formats is fixed. No, that's that's part. I say we'd have to work towards that space of understanding and making all that be able to work as a state. Well, and that's I'm basically. saying it. It's not practical. I I I don't know that it's not practical. I don't think we've tried. So. Uh, well, I know we haven't tried. I'm just right. saying. So that's why I'm, it, it might be possible. I haven't sat down and thought about it. So, to me, that's the solution. Not getting the SDK. I mean, if you're putting Wix libs in it anyway. What Zach is talking about is very similar to a Rust crate, which is why I. Except he's doing Wix libs, right? If you put a Rust crate is source code, so you have to. That's what I'm saying. Right. A so... Rust crate includes source code and the instructions to build it. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, the project file, the the SDK project file doesn't go in a NuGet package. I, it does in a Rust crate. It doesn't. I'm just in saying. A I'm it's saying not... in a NuGet, it doesn't work that way. Well, you except, don't ship the except package. if you're using, new, you're, you're, you're saying that there's no built-in support for this. Okay, who cares? If you're using NuGet as a delivery mechanism, you probably have something wrapping it. Uh, let me take that back. Where I have seen people do this, they have something wrapping it. Yeah, you, you have a, you, yeah, you have to have a props and a targets file because that's what NuGet does to add it back in the world. But that's not the project again. Yeah. Okay, I, I agreed, or I don't care. I'm just saying we've seen this scenario in Rust, so this is not you know completely wacky. It doesn't play in putting you know, the package the current... file in the NuGet package doesn't make sense to me. The, so the project file in there that's the part that's still weird. Putting things. Well, are you there. are you saying that Rust crates don't make sense to you? I'm saying they aren't the way that we ship things in NuGet. They're different. There are different mechanisms inside NuGet. Okay. I'm just saying if you're using NuGet as a delivery mechanism, it doesn't matter. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. The point here of being able to build Wix libs for four, five, and six into a single NuGet package is interesting. Until but, it breaks in seven. Yeah, and then you have to add seven. I mean... Yeah, so, yeah. And you're going to want to dedupe and blah, blah, blah. So maybe the zip archive approach isn't the right approach either. No, I, I, I mean, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I, I, I get it. This is like the... Yeah, we we haven't 
done anything around sharing risk slips like this and yeah. it's just it's not a big scenario yet so i get it. it's really you want a single set of tools to build okay. so i understand the scenario is you want a set of tools to target the the latest compiler to be able to target a four wix lib a five wix lib and a six wix lib which is what the c sharp compiler does I can't have the same source multiple Wix versions without having the multiple parallel Wix project files and doing some. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, right. So, and yes, this is why they created the inner and outer builds inside MS build for C sharp so that they could run the C sharp project multiple times. And the C sharp compiler uh, has the ability to output, to specify its outputs. Um, to different, uh, to specify different target out, different versions of the .NET uh, runtime, I guess, right? So you can say with the C Sharp 9 compiler target, or the, the, nine, the .NET 9 compiler target .NET 8, .NET 7, .NET 6. I don't know how much farther you can go. You can certainly go to .NET standard. I guess it can go to four or five. So it understands how to emit to all the different output formats, right? So that's not, that's done inside the compiler. That's not done at the prep, uh, the project, the pack, the project level, Ugh. right? They have one, they have the compiler that can spit out all those things. So you can have one project that you could just loop over and say, Hey, build all these things different. Now. Wix, we don't do that. That's a whole lot of interesting uh, challenging work keeping all of the different compilers to build yeah keeping the compiler so it can output four five six seven eight so on and so forth yeah yeah that's a it's a non-trivial undertaking <laughs> and then then you want then we would want to also wire up the outer inner build concept which doesn't we haven't done in wix either because uh it doesn't work either no it's it's interesting I, I was just trying to understand the scenario and the scenario is being able to target multiple different versions of older Wix compilers. And that is definitely not something that we've done yet. And it's not something that you would solve at the project level to start. We'd have to solve it first at the compiler level for these outputs. This is like Diffix app way back when. Diffix app. Diffix app, Diffix app shipped version two Wix libs, and yeah. then that didn't work so well in V3. Yep, and then we had to carry it. What did we do? I forgot. Did we create two? We just fixed Someone the created two? V3 Wix libs. I don't right. remember. And then we, we just carried the two did. ones along for a while? Not three. Not in three. We just never carried them in three. Yeah. No. Yep, this is a this is a level of compatibility that we've not uh we've just not tried to solve yet. And it would be so it's either try to find a way of making Wix libs uh max compatible like uh the C people did, or the ability to maybe target multiple ver older versions of the Wix tool set the way that the .NET compiler does. And it's a solution in Probably one or of those two solutions, um, or or both. The C plus plus team did that as well, right? But they literally ship multiple versions of the C tools to support different I want to say targets isn't the right word, but they actually ship like you know the exes from previous versions of Visual C plus plus. Yeah, it's yeah, it's like yeah. Where do you want to draw the line to? Make but they end up with a format, the libs and the DLLs that are compatible with the runtime. Yeah, but that was the whole universal lib. Like that was an effort for them, right? Like they had to do well to make that happen. Yeah, yeah, but you know the UCRT was the subset, and they had to essentially keep doing that in the rest of the runtime, and and that that's hard. That's harder. Yeah, it's <laughs> yep. It's a it's a non-trivial problem 
uh, for a space that not many people have mentioned that they deal with. So it's certainly not been prioritized anyway. But I understand the scenario, and I just want to make sure it wasn't a new scenario. It was just a repeat of this scenario, which makes sense that it is. It's also interesting that you have projects that are staying on four, five, and six as you go along. That's interesting uh, dealing with that. <laughs> Until there's a security fix. Um, yeah, well, you know, and four goes out of service in February, so that'll help, you know, trim that one. Um, so, you know, things like that. So, uh, out of community service, security service. All right. Random digression into a world that we're still a bit a ways away from. There's a bunch of other things that would happen, I think, before we tackled that one. Um, Currently impossible to use different Wix versions and same. Yeah, that's a so that's something that's bit us before. Yeah. Um, that's an MS build limitation that they will not allow different versions of SDK within the same instance. It's it's not as niche as you might think. It should be. It would be nice if it was allowed, um, because we have that same problem. Because when we build the Fire Giant um, Heatwave build. Um, extensions. Um, those we target both four and five from them because the extension APIs aren't the same, and we use the SDKs, and we have to do a big switch over the top of both the four rebuild and the five build to make all that work. So uh, we definitely felt that pain, which is similar to your wastelet pain, because we have customers that are both on four and on five and are to maintain both. Um, so the big, it's just a big switch at the top that was, you know, a bit of work to make that happen because MS build will not let you have a four Wix proj and a five Wix proj within the same MS build invocation, which is, or, or uh, even a 501 and a 502. Correct. Wix proj. It'll just pick one. Yeah. Right. But to be clear, we wouldn't be an MS build SDK anymore delivered through NuGet, we would have to install an SDK and then do all kinds of different switches. And that's a whole different thing. <laughs> it's a completely different way of doing what we're doing. And it takes away all the benefits that we get by being distributed. Uh, AKA you don't have to install it on your build server, which is one of the big things that people want. Actually, it's, I think it's even worse than that. You would have to install multiple. You could have a, a versionless MS build SDK for Wix but then all the tool sets would have to be installed. Correct. We'd have to carry all the old ones. Yeah. Right. I mean, for as many as we wanted to. Well, or you could do what the .NET team does, right? Where they uh, just install everything side by side. <laughs> or, I forgot. Oh, yeah. No, that, that was my, well, yeah. that was my assumption. Yeah. It's either one big package or, yeah. you know, that's actually doable. Yeah. And, you know, it would fill my heart with joy that we could install Wix again, actually install Yes. It. But then we'd be back in that world that people didn't want us to be in. Yeah, I know. I know. So, it's like, oh, I don't want to have to install this on my CI system. So I'm like, Ugh. right. And they're not the same. That's the other problem. They're, I don't, I mean, probably do a bit of work to try to make them line up, but they'd be completely different test paths and everything. So, yeah, yeah. It's a whole lot of extra work um, to get all those things working. Why would you need an installer? You already put extensions in new packages, which you need to. No, the SDK is in a NuGet as well. So you, the Wix 4 is an SDK, is a NuGet package, and the Wix 5 is an SDK. If we could put, like, I guess we could ship inside the Wix 5 SDK all the previous versions of Wix, that'd be another way of shipping it. Like, just ship That's a whole the big package. Of, yeah, and then it's a gigantic NuGet package carrying around a whole, all the previous versions of Wix inside it, too. But you have, if you want to ship an MS Build SDK through NuGet, you have to have a version on it. You cannot ship them without a version unless your SDK is installed in a very special place or in a particular place and laid out in a way. So you have to have a version if you're distributing through NuGet. And it has nothing to do with extensions. This is, all, this is just purely the SDK. The SDK is a completely separate distribution mechanism from the extensions. Yes, they both come from NuGet.org, but the timing and the way they operate in the build are completely different. 
unless there were a way for the SDK to be neutral and rely on a package reference to get the rest of the tools. No, I no, don't. the timing, the timing doesn't work there. I, 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 I agree with that. I don't think that would no, work. No, that doesn't work because that's you, you have, <laughs> it might work if you like faked your build system long enough to eventually have something else show up so much later. The timing, okay. That's hacky and that's not what they tell you to do. So you'd have to. <sighs> you would need a, you would need an, a versionless SDK. So you would stick with, you know, Wix Super SDK 1.0.0. But yeah, you, the, the tools would have to come down as the actual Wix tools. I mean, you, you would need, the SDK would have to include all the tools that you would yeah. need. See, it almost to, to worked very hacky. And none of it is the way that MS Build expects it to work. That's, yeah. Yeah, you're, you're, yeah. At that point, you're back to fighting the system. Yeah. I mean, no. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, that's, could you make it work? Maybe until they change a thing that you depend on because it's not what they expected. And then you're broken. And <laughs> so that's. Pretty crazy. We also, we get back I, and to I'm pretty the, sure they'd look at us and be like, yeah, go away. <laughs> we don't care. Um, that was very clever. We will punish you for that. Exactly. That was very clever. Very, very clever. Um, so, anyway. Uh, <laughs> no, not that. Uh, all right. We'll be back in four weeks and we'll do triage and all that. And we will not be doing hacky SDK things. Uh, but if you're interested, there's lots that you can learn about the inner workings of MS build and SDKs and stuff like that. And um, it can get pretty twisty pretty fast. Um, yeah. Good, good luck coming out sane. <laughs> uh, there aren't many people that choose to go in there and uh, it was a lot of work um, getting it all stable the first time. Oh, and then try to make it work for Visual Studio. That's a whole nother world of hurt. Anyway, on that positive note, I will see you guys in four weeks. Talk to you guys later. Bye. Bye.